Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally like to talk a lot of bollocks at tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a real time game that involves sand timers. We're going to be talking about kites. And in this game, you will be playing cards and flipping sand timers over in the hope that you can stop any one of these six sand timers from running out before you run out of cards that will allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like, what we don't like. We'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not kites is worth your time or bother today and in the future. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. We'll see you after this. Bollocks. So, kites, how do you play this game? So Kites is a real-time game, not really a dexterity game, that sees you trying to flip over sand timers before they run out. Each player is going to be given a hand of cards. The less players there are, the more cards you'll get. And this game supports between two and six players. You'll set the sand timers up in the center of the table, and on your turn, you will play a card from your hand. You'll see that each card has symbols on it. You will either have single symbols or you will have double symbols. And each icon on the card refers to one of the sand timers timers that's in the center of the table. The first player will start the game, they flip the white sand timer and then they will play a card from their hand and will have to flip over the corresponding sand timers. Once you've done that you'll draw back up to your hand limit and then the next player will have to play a card and do the same thing. The idea of the game is if any of the sand timers run out then you lose so you'll have to keep playing cards making sure that each of the sand timers stays in a relatively healthy position. Once the draw deck has run out then you will flip the white sand timer for one last time and then you've got until the white sand timer runs out to play the rest of your hands and if you manage to do that then you will win if you don't manage to do that then there is a little score chart that depending on how many cards you've got left in a draw pile and in your hands you'll get a slap on the back or a punch in the face and if the game is a little bit too easy for you then you can add in these challenge cards that make the game a little bit harder so you could add in the storm cards and you'll have to immediately announce a storm is coming and then on your next turn that is the only card that you will be able to play right you might have the crossed lines card and you will announce crossed lines then each player will have to swap a card from their hand with a player on the left right well you might draw the airplane card and then you'll have to announce airplane <laughs> Right? And what this means is that all the players cannot speak to each other until that card is covered up. Because ordinarily, you'll be able to shout instructions at the other players telling them which of the sand timers, usually the red sand timer, is going to run out. You either win or you lose. And if you win, then you'll be the winner of kites. Right? So what do we like about kites? So the first thing that we enjoy about this game is that it's really quite a tense and exciting game, right? It doesn't look like it on a box, but when you are throwing them cards down, trying to rush to think about which of the sand timers is going to run out first, it really does get your heart rate pumping, right? One of the strategies we found out with this game is that it pays you to wait for one of the sand timers to run down, but in doing that, some of the other sand timers are going to run out and you're going to have other players screaming at you to turn over sand timers that they can play cards from their hand to turn over themselves, right? So even though this is a cooperative game, it's sort of like a semi-competitive game because you want to get rid of the cards in your hand and also try and muck in for the common cause, right? So the second thing that we like about this game, and I'm not sure if this is like a design flaw or if our copy's faulty, but I'm hoping that this is the way that the game was designed, is that some of the sand timers have more sand in than others. If you look at the red sand timer, it's got less sand in it, and the purple sand timer has got just a little bit more sand in it than the red one. So you'll constantly be looking at the sand times that have got less sand in, trying to play those red cards quickly. And because there's double icon cards, when you're playing a red icon to turn a red sand timer, you're going to be inadvertently screwing up with the yellow one, which somebody else is going to have to take care of. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because once you wash the shit off your hands, then it's somebody else's problem. So the final thing that we really like about kites is that there's a nice touch with the white timer at the end of the game. Once the draw decks run out, then you're going to be flipping that for one more time. And there's going to be this one last mad dash to try and get all of the cards out of all of your hands as quickly as possible. And it leads to a real Really nice tense crescendo everyone's going to be going absolutely fucking mental screaming at each other to play the card that will allow them to play their card and if this hadn't been in it the game would have just sort of petered out like that last little bit of piss you're trying to squeeze out in the bog right don't we like about kites 
So the first thing that we don't really like about this game is that it can be a little bit too easy if you don't throw in the challenge cards. And this is a good thing and it's a bad thing because, well, I've got kids, yeah. The challenge cards are a little bit too tricky for my younger children, right? So we play the core game and maybe they dip their toe in the water of the hardcore challenges now and again. But for most people like you and me, once you've got the idea into your head, once you realise that each player can take one of the timers and then shout out whether or not it's getting low so this works well in a six player game everyone's going to be responsible for screaming about one timer then you're really going to want to play with the challenge cards most of the time otherwise the game is just a little bit too easy right so the second thing that we don't really like about this game and this doesn't come up too often but when it does it's a pain in the fucking ass because sometimes nobody has a card to play in their hand because you're just going to be drawing cards off the deck right if the initial shuffle provides you with no options at all then the game is lost right and there's nothing you can really do about that because you are again at the mercy of a sodding draw day but it doesn't happen that often so we can sort of forgive this game for that but if it does happen then the game can be reset in a matter of seconds and it's not that long at all right so the last thing that we don't like about kites is that there's not really that many challenge cards in the box how many is there how many did we say there was brian like a fucking sieve two there's only three variations i mean you can chuck them all in right if you think you've got a dick bigger than mandingo there's not that much variety they could have thrown a few more in for good measure where we said the game is a little bit too easy without them then maybe five or six of these challenge cards would have been a little bit better don't be so stingy next time floodgate games a eh? to summarize is kites worth your time and bother today and in the future so we're going to say yes, this is an excellent real-time, well, not really dexterity game, is it? But it's an excellent real-time game that is almost too simple to comprehend. We couldn't believe how simple this game was. And for such a simple game, there is just enough choices to make this game interesting. Are you going to wait for a timer to run down so you can play a card, thereby risking another sand timer running out for the next player? Are you going to play a single card that will allow you to turn that white sand timer over just before the deck runs out. So yeah, for such a simple game, it does produce some really decent choices. Add to that, the game supports up to six players. And if you can find six players that want to play this thing, you are in for a blast because the more players you have, the more chaos you are going to have. And that's what this game's all about. It's about 10 minutes of sublime, organized chaos. And that's what we want. We love a bit of chaos in our lives, right? And we love this game. It's a short, sharp shock to your brain. And as such, it comes highly recommended by us. So there you go. That's Kites. Remember, if you're new, please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit we'll see you next time